This guy is freaking Donkey Kong. I mean, just look at him. He like hops around, he rolls, he punches his chest, and uh, flexes his muscles. Water pulse. Okay. Whatever reason I thought he was gonna go for confusion on Voltaire, but okay, makes sense. I'm weak to it. No complaints there. I understand why you made that move, you monkey man. Okay. Uh, we'll go for the bite on Slow King right here. Well, no. We'll go for the Thunderbolt on Leiron. It's a rock type and a ground type, and we'll go for the Ancient Power to finish off Slow King. Okay. Great. Just great. Great. Just great. Okay. A lot of annoying protects. Okay. Ancient Power should finish him off. There we go. If I could get all stats up, that'd be really nice. Oh, Slow King. It felt painful to beat you. Slow King is actually one of my favorite looking Pokemon and also one of my childhood favorites. I don't know why. I never really used one on a team, though, but I just always kind of liked how it looked. And I like All right, Hypno, we're going for you first. You may not be paralyzed, but I got a good feeling about this. Let's do it. Hand pops out, grabs you, brings you back into my Pokeball. Pokeball? Sounds like a vegetarian type of Pokeball. <laughs> one, two. Damn it. Two. One. Two. Three. And now that we've caught Primeape, kids, say it with me. How many postcards did Ash send in to get that hat? About a million! How many postcards did Misty send in to get that hat? One! How many postcards did Mickey slash Primeape send in to get that hat? Absolutely none! Uh, I am such a geek. Sorry, I just always liked that joke as a kid. I'm gonna be honest with you, several turns have passed, and the hardest thing I have had to do in this fight was not actually fight his team. His core team was really, really not hard. I took them down without breaking a sweat. Catching this Hypno, on the other hand, and surviving its attacks every turn has gotten me down to my last Pokemon. No, I'm not kidding. Look at this. I got my stash out, but yeah, I'm using Gene at this point. It has been that nuts to catch this dang Hypno. I'm to the point where I'm actually having to use potions just to keep myself alive to outlast it because it's been breaking out of so many dang balls. Okay, gonna throw another timer ball. Because I really don't want to lose this. One, two, three. Lord Arceus above. Thank you for making that catch. Ah. Oh god! He even did Donkey Kong's death animation. <laughs> okay. And really, the rich businessman named Varric being the bad guy. Can't say I've heard that one before. Or have I? Dunno. Anyway, things are looking rather grim. But as I turn around, I think our day is looking brighter. Why do I say that? Well, there's something shiny on the desk, of course. Duh, it's looking brighter. It's a list of all the manufactured Shadow Pokemon. We get to download that on our PDA just because all technology is based on Bill's technology. It's a one operating system future. Um, maybe that's why their technology is so weird and kind of unusual, just because there's no competition in the world, so people can just kind of make things however they want. I don't know. I don't want to live in that kind of world. I guess nothing to do now, but leave this place heading down to the base of the lair. Robbed! What? Who's up? What? Uh, uh, let's rush over there and see what's going on. Whose voice was that? Was it you, citizen? Darn it. Give it back. Bring it back. You have to be more specific when you're shouting incoherently, otherwise I can't do anything about it. These two weird guys took off with a shadow Pokemon. One had, like, a mohawk, and the other had hair, like, a ball. Darn it, they made off the last shadow Pokemon that came off the production line before it shut down. Hmm, I wonder who we know with hair like a ball. Quite the puzzler, wouldn't you say? What do you have to say? The abducted shadow Pokemon was a Dragonite. That ended up being the last shadow Pokemon to be made at this factory. That means that Dragonite is the last authentic shadow Pokemon. This is something you're going to want to remember for a while. Look at that! Shadow Pokemon Factory that was wrecked by Michael. That feels awesome, just having your name plastered on the map like that. I, I can't say anything feels better than that. Anyway, you might recall that we got a certain really inconvenient email at one point. You know, where Emily's mom was always like, Oh, I want to interview you and all that. Oh, Jovi's big brother, I saw you in the news. It's awesome, I think you're really cool. Uh, okay. Sure. Mommy's always like that. Emily hasn't read any of Mommy's stories to the very end. Mommy's a genius at writing stories that don't have endings. <laughs> That's great. It's always tough ending anything. Anyway, so she sent us that really, really annoying letter saying she wanted to interview us. Well, if you come over here and talk to her, Michael, you're in my email. I've been waiting for this. For seeing it on TV, you've been on my mind, Michael. I've come to realize there's nothing to do but write a novel starring you. So please let me interview you. Let's begin right away.
two hours later. I see! Michael, it was, it was you that saved Professor Crane, the director of the Pokemon HQ Lab? You bet it was. And you were on TV for the Fanag News, but you've been on TV before? Yeah. Oh, goodness, the Ace Labor was attacked because Cypher wanted to get at the Pokemon on board? You betcha. Wow, that's beyond incredible. Michael, you must be an amazingly talented trainer despite your appearance. Just interviewing you has excited me to that much. Your tale is so thrilling, harrowing, and exhilarating. I owe you a huge thanks for agreeing to the interview. Thank you so much. She will give you the amulet coin. Equipping this to a Pokemon and having it participate in battle will give you double money at the end of a fight. It's not like money is really sparse in the land of Ore, considering how many amazing free items we've gotten, but, you know, it's there if you want it. And that's actually something that I didn't know until uh, you guys told me about it in comp. Gosh, you old hag. Mr. Farrick has gone away. He left me a with a gaping void where my heart once fluttered. Oh, what am I to live for now? There's no purpose in this life without him. Mr. Farrick, please come back. That is very, very depressing, if I may say so. Hey, Shadow Pokemon on the radar. Yeah, okay. Anyway, if you head over to the part shop... Yo, Michael, big news, real big news. That Robo Kyogre we've been telling you about is finally done. Once Grandpa got down to it and got serious with it, he put together something kind of amazing. Come over here, guy. You have to listen to my grandpa. For once, he's actually proud of his grandpa and wants us to listen to him instead of being like, Oh, he's off at Kaminko's lab again. Precisely, Purr. Our Robo Kyogre will be able to reach the aisle. All right. We must prepare to launch Robo Kyogre for Michael. Come, Purr. Yes, sir. That kind of rhymed. So for once, the two of them are getting along, and, you know, the one time Dr. Kaminko makes a super useful invention, he scraps it before it's complete. Figures as much. We got it. But now we're on a hover scooter, you know, we are, like, way more pimping than the last time our mom saw us. You know, we've grown a lot. I mean, just having a hover scooter makes you all grown up, right? I am so lame. Anyway, uh, this is not where Professor Crane is. I went through the wrong entrance. Here we go. Hi, Michael. I'm glad to see you back. There's something I want to give you, Michael. Could you come here, please? Oh my god, he's giving me a CRT monitor! Oh, oh ahaha, did that startle you? Now come with me. Well, uh, I don't know how he fit through that. That ceiling only had clearance for, like, his waist. In fact, it's not even short enough for me to go through it. It's not even tall enough for me to go through it. Michael, over this way. Come with me, please. Um, do I really feel comfortable being a ten-year-old boy going into an adult secret passage basement that nobody else in the lab is aware of? Not overly, but I'll go with it. The battle against Cypher appears to have entered a decisive phase. Really, I thought it entered a critical phase. I think the situation calls for a special solution. Michael, there's something here I'd like you to use. Well, Professor Crane, you got some pretty stiff competition. Cypher has given us some pretty darn good item boxes. Let's see what you got. Master Ball! There's, that's a Master Ball. The, it's the one Pokeball that is full proof and has a 100% capture ratio. Well, isn't a ratio kind of like, you know, one to one and not 100? I'm so stupid, anyway. Yes, you get a Master Ball for coming all this way over here. Not inconvenient in the slightest. Really, really nice. I believe it's the second time in the whole series where... A Master Ball has been found inside of an item box, uh, or item ball, rather. And you know what? Even though Archie had an unguarded Master Ball in his base, I kind of like to think that that was in a secret room that was kind of out of the way and that you stole it, though. So do I think that um, Archie was kinder than Cypher? No, nah, I can't really say that I think he was. Now, our second stop is going to be Kaminko's house. By heading back here, you will see the new and improved Robo Groudon. Oh, what? Oh, <laughs> He sends us the email right now while we're walking up. <laughs> the Robo Groudon of yours is no more. Chobin and modified and upgraded. Therefore, a rematch with Michael's very much desired. Chobin will not lose again. The new Robo Groudon is supreme. Looks exactly the same. Huh? Oh, it's you, Michael. Since when were you there? Well, how about that? Chobin did need to send an email, but that's fine. Chobin has successfully upgraded the Robo Groudon. What a modification has been. A, what modification has been secret though? Let's begin. So he no longer has the awesome boss music, but hey, it is still Robo Groudon nonetheless, and that is pretty cool. Now that is Pokemon have evolved. Not really much is different though. It's not all that different of a fight compared to what it was last time. Uh, Sunflora's animation still looks terrifying, like its head is gonna pop off and ooh, sunny day. Not sure why I'm getting so freaked out about that. Now, 
You might notice that the sky is like super, super, super cloudy in the background there, so it's obviously not a sunny day at all. Now, this kind of brings me to something I want to... I've talked about before in Pokemon games, though, but I just kind of feel like is really, really relevant here. Is the fact that Sunny Day is called Clear Sky in the Japanese version. That's why a lot of the time attack animations don't match up at all, and why some text seems a little bit weird. Is Like, for example, Moonlight uh, recovering more HP when Sunny Day is in effect, which makes no sense. Uh, but here... It doesn't even make sense in the context of the Japanese version. It is not a clear sky whatsoever. This is about the least clear sky I have ever seen in my life. And that's saying a lot considering that I lived in Florida for a bunch of years of my life. Just saying. Florida is not the sunshine state. It is the friggin' overcast state. And he has a little wheel on the tail. <laughs> I never knew that. That's actually kind of funny. I, I never noticed that, that he has a little tiny wheel on that. That is, that's, that's actually really funny. And so it was somehow even better. Chobin lost after all. Oops, Chobin said it again. His jaw drops. And, well, if there's one thing Robo Groudon's good at, it's spitting out lots of money at us. So strange, Chobin upgraded the driver's seat with a reclining back. Was that not enough? Not enough to snatch victory? Chobin is in utter shock. <laughs> in a world of giant-footed individuals, one small boy with tiny feet steps forward to be hilarious and a savior of his kind with his Robo Groudon.